What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today we are going to talk about storing your guitars, some myths, some rumors, some things you might want to know. So this whole thing came up for me because, you know, I've been living in a motorhome for two and a half years, or about two years, and uh, just got a place. And I had some guitars in storage that I have not seen for the whole time I was gone. They've been sitting in my mother-in-law's spare room closet. Haven't been played. So we're going to look at one of those guitars right now. And we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about what affects a guitar when it is stored and what does not. And we're gonna make some suggestions on what you can do, uh, especially as the season changes, uh, to make sure that your guitars stay in the best shape possible as humidity and temperature changes. And so let's chat about that. I'm gonna show you this guitar, it's very cool. Cool story. This is my 1985 Fender Stratocaster. It's Japanese. Uh, it's one of those E-series ones from Japan. I think it's a Fuji Gen uh, model. It's got a Kaler Series 1 tremolo on it. This thing is super cool. The trem is super rare, really cool guitar, and it's my first guitar ever. This is my first electric guitar that I had. Uh, man, I was a teenager early, and uh, my dad gave this thing to me, and I've had it ever since. Never wanted to sell it. The other really cool thing about this guitar is these pickups that are in this guitar are the very first strap pickups I ever made uh, at Dylan Tox Tone. So I wanna do a video coming up actually where we make a new set of pickups and we put them in a guitar and we kind of play them back to back and see how they've changed, you know? And they'd be kind of fun. So this big guitar has been sitting in storage for two years. I have not touched it. I literally, for the first time when, you, when I pulled it off the stand right now, I have not touched it, I have not strummed it, I have not tuned it, I have not anything. Pulled it out of the case, hung it up on the wall about a week ago, you've seen it hanging in the back of the last video we did. Now, let's look this thing over and see how storing it for two years has affected it. Let's look at the string, the neck relief, looks fine. String height looks fine. Um, Uh, and obviously I need to tune it, but it's pretty dang close. What does that mean for storing a guitar? Myth number one, people want to say that you need to detension your guitars when you put them in storage, when you ship them, all that kind of stuff. Here's the thing. A guitar is designed. The actual design of the guitar is made to have string tension on it. So when you read it, release the string tension and leave it that way for a long time, bad things can actually happen more than any good things. Let's say we take the string tension off this guitar and we leave it. The truss rod is now pulling this way on the neck because the string this way on the neck, the truss rod is pulling that way and it's equalizing that tension, giving us our playing surface, our neck relief. If you remove all the strings or you remove the tension off the strings, the wood's gonna go that way going to give you some crazy back bow. If you loosen, because you're going to say, well, let me just loosen the truss rod and I'll just let it sit, you know, kind of loose. Okay. If you do that, then the wood is left up to its own devices. And we all know that wood does not act the same way every time. And then when there are humidity changes, more than temperature, we'll get into that in a minute, humidity changes, the wood can move around and do what it's gonna do, resulting in, I have seen, twists and various things that you don't wanna have. And if the neck twists 90% of the time, at least of what I've seen, you can't really get it back all the way. How do you combat that? You don't detension your guitar. Just leave the strings on it. Tune it up, put it in storage, leave the strings on it, period. The end, end of story, it's not gonna hurt anything. Not at all. You're gonna say, well, I've seen bridges pull off and I've seen, you know, yes, you have. So let's chat about the thing 
that affects guitars in storage more than anything else. Humidity. On an electric guitar, it kind of affects it. But everything's pretty strong. You know, it's a solid body, etc. Let's move to an acoustic guitar because those are way more affected by this. Oh, not this one. <laughs> this isn't affected by anything. Okay, so here's my breed love. This is a rosewood back and sides, ebony fretboard, uh, mahogany neck, spruce top. Awesome. Now, what is going to affect this guitar the most? Obviously, humidity. Humidity is the biggest thing. So here's what happens. It happens a little bit in electric guitars too, but way more on acoustics. So here's what happens with electric uh, acoustic guitars. As the moisture goes into the wood, because it can, because you know the back of the wood is all raw, even though the top is finished. So the moisture can go into the wood because it occupies, let's just call it the space in the wood, then it gets to a point where it can't anymore and actually you'll see swelling. So like the top will actually raise up, your action will go up, the top will belly up like this. Uh, that's if there's too much moisture. Typically above 60% somewhere, you'll start to see things change in a guitar, 60% humidity and above. You get below about 45% humidity and you start to have shrinkage. This is where you start to have fret ends stick out. Now that can happen on an electric guitar also. You'll also have uh, where your binding will start to suck in and you'll start to have um, not cracks, but you'll see these little kind of depressions around your binding. Uh, you'll also start to see uh, little kind of impressions in the finish, like on the grains of the wood, as the wood dries out because everything's kind of sucking in to the wood uh, as the moisture leaves it. And so uh, it, it can affect it. Now here's the thing, if you let a guitar dry out, a lot of times it won't come back because you'll start to get cracks, you'll start to get finished cracks, finish shrinkage, those sorts of things, and it will not come back. So it's very important to keep your humidity between like 45 and 65%. So the, the folks that say, I left tension on my guitar and the bridge popped off, that's probably because you let it dry out. It's probably because the humidity was too low or in some cases, the heat was too high. So let's chat about heat in an electric guitar. So this is my 2021 Gibson SG Junior. The difference between this, the reason we're talking about this guitar versus the Strat is because the Strat has a urethane finish. The acoustic guitar that I just showed you has a urethane finish. This guitar has a nitrocellulose finish. So what difference does that make? Nitrocellulose never really dries. It's kind of, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. It's not technically accurate, but it's kind of the easiest way to say that it never really dries. The other thing is the elasticity of it is different than urethane. So when you get very, very cold temperatures or snap cold temperatures, then it is susceptible to checking. You've all, we've all seen it, right? Like the Murphy Lab Les Pauls and old Les Pauls, they'll have that cracking, that checking in it. This guitar has not done that because we have not subjected it to high and low temperatures. Now I could do it to the guitar on purpose actually. Nitrocellulose will do that. Urethane won't. So this is kind of the difference between all of this stuff. Uh, if you have a urethane finished electric guitar, for example, actually any of those up there. So we've got the Strat, we've got the Tele Squire, classic vibe. We've got the Schecter, uh, Sun Valley, and we've got the Sterling Music Man bass. Those all have urethane finishes on them. Those are gonna be way less susceptible to humidity and temperature changes. Do you remember a video we did a couple years ago where we took a Squire and we left it in my truck overnight and it was 20 degrees outside, we brought it in and it played fine and there was no issues and no finish cracks or anything like that. If we did that with this guitar, the finish would crack like crazy. So, Temperature is really more for the finish on the guitar and in some acoustic guitars, older ones especially, the glue. So glue, when it gets hot, will separate 
that sort of thing. Sometimes you could have a neck pop. So extreme temperatures for older instruments or instruments that have older processes like nitrocellulose finish, hide glue, all those sorts of things, be way more cautious with temperature. Urethane and more modern instruments probably don't need to worry about temperature so much. The number one thing that'll kill a guitar is a too humid or too dry, mostly too dry, situation. So here's what I would recommend. If you're going to play your guitar on a regular basis, leaving them hanging like that's totally fine. No stress on the neck, there's none of those stupid ideas. Leave them up there, hang them, play them. I take them down all the time and I play them and they're just part of my circulation. However, I make sure that the humidity in the room is between 45 and 65% so that I don't have to worry about the extremes of humidity. Obviously I live here so the temperature is gonna be okay, but humidity, we wanna make sure that we check. If you have a guitar that you're not gonna play for a really, really, really long time and it is urethane or whatever, chances are you can leave it hanging up there just fine. Acoustic guitars that are more susceptible to humidity changes, maybe if you leave them in the case and you don't, because you don't play them for a really long time, leave them in the case and uh, get one of those little humidity things. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Put that in the case uh, and monitor your humidity. Get a hygrometer for your room. I'll leave a link to that one, I'll, maybe one of these right here. Uh, get one of these off of Amazon. And then if you need to adjust the humidity in your room, get one of these little humidifiers right here. And I'll leave a link to all this stuff below. Keep your humidity between 45 and 65% in your room. Keep your temperature reasonable and uh, know the difference between nitrocellulose and hide glue and all those old fashioned ways of making guitars. And then don't worry so much about anything modern because all that stuff's gonna hold up way better. Obviously don't abuse your instruments, but when you take care of them, just watch the humidity, you're gonna be just fine. And don't detune them when you store them. There you go. Thanks for hanging out, man. Do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button. And uh, well, we got cool videos coming out on Wednesday, which is our, our gear news. We also have a cool video coming out on Thursday, which is a live stream. We have a lot of cool stuff coming. A couple of reviews coming up. I think you're gonna dig it. Make sure you go to the website, check out the merch and our pickups. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you soon.